Hello, welcome to the Alone Show. I'm your host, John Alone. In this episode, no regulars, because reasons, as always. As for our guest, she is from Texas, and she is a singer-songwriter. And she goes by a well-known alienist, and she has currently one million followers. Whereabouts? Well, we're about to find out. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Lady Redneck. Uh, thanks so much for having me. You're welcome. So, how is life? It is fabulous. It really is. How is life for you? F- life is fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. So, is there anything you've been up to since we last met? Oh my word, yes, I have been very busy. <laughs> um, yes, I have... Um released a whole, I finished my um, Christian, my first all Christian CD before I was just doing country. And then a couple years ago, I started doing Christian and I finished that CD in December and was able to start selling it and just getting the world word out there. It's, it's called God So Love the World. And um, I was very excited to find out, I think it was last week that it, um, it's been nominated for a, at the Gospel Fan Choice Awards. I've been nominated for a Christian Singer of the Year, Christian Song of the Year. So I'm really, really excited to to have that happen as well. Um, and then wow. I also started up a fan club. I've got I've got my website. I've got a couple of websites, and then I've got one that I share on social media all the time. And on there, I've got a members only club that I do as well as so many other fun things. So I've been busy. <laughs> That's great to hear. Thank you. You're welcome. And as an artist, are there any other music artists that you want to collaborate with someday? Oh yeah, I would love, I would love to. I think, I think collaboration just brings out the best of everybody. So um there are some christian artists as well as some country artists and then some of either of other genres as well so absolutely Mm, very nice yeah if you were given 500 acres of land what would you use that land for i (laughs) oh i would use i would have part of it so that I could um, fish and my husband could hunt. We'd have to have that set up. Um, and then I would like to, I've had a dream for years to start this, um, like a women's center where if women and children are going through a hard time, they've got a place to stay. And in my imagination, because I've, I've planned it all out, there's there's homes for the women and children. And then there's there's a place where women can go and learn a trade so that they can be able to support themselves and a place where the kids can go to school. And in this, in this imaginary place of mine, there's also a garden. So everybody can work on the garden and be able to eat the food for free and just be able to learn how to support themselves a little bit better and be more self-reliant as well as just heal and be able to, you know, get on with their life and become the people that they have the potential to be. That's great. Thank you. You're welcome. What could you give a 40-minute presentation on without any preparation? (laughs) I could. I would love to do one about the Savior Jesus Christ any chance I get. Um, I could also do it about social media. I love helping others, people, uh, businesses just figure out how to market themselves better through social media because it's such a great opportunity and a lot of businesses don't really know where to start and a lot of artists or different people really don't know how to market themselves and it really makes a difference because if you are you know, a mother and you're taking care of your kids or you're a father that's already working full time and you want to be able to perform full time, but you don't know how to get there. Doing social media helps build up the fan base so that you can get there and then be able to do the music full time. So I, you can see, I can, I could talk about that for a long time. (laughs) Yes. That's very good. (laughs) Thank you. Welcome. What should they teach in high school, but they don't? 
Oh, that's something I could talk about for 15 minutes as well. They should teach finances, how to do your taxes. They should teach self-reliance skills. When we lived, um, my family, we moved over to the Philippines for almost a year and a half. And in their high school there, the, the boys would all, learn arc, would all learn engineering, an engineering trade, and the girls would all learn um, how to do hair and nails. And I mean, it doesn't have to be those things, but if yeah. there was a specific trade that they could learn, and then just life skills overall. I mean, there, you know, um, yeah, I, I think anything that has to do with finances and being able to work and figure out how much money you need to be able to make to pay these bills and how to, how to pay your taxes, like things like that that aren't being taught really should be. Yeah, absolutely. Would you rather never age physically or never age mentally? Ooh. <laughs> Wow, that's a great question. All your questions are great. Oh my goodness. Thank you. Oh wow. Um, hmm. That I would have to say, you know, aging mentally is not necessarily a bad thing because with that comes wisdom. Um, I mean, as long as we're not talking about the Alzheimer's dementia thing, but we're just talking about aging as far as experience and life experience, stuff like that, then I would have to say age physically. But if, if we were talking about something really, um, something like Alzheimer's or dementia, that just, it's uh, honestly heartbreaking. And so then I would go with the other. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Would you rather be teleported 500 years into the future or 500 years into the past? Ooh, that, <laughs> I love this. Um, I would have to say the future. And I, you know, we know how, what's been written in the past. We already know what's happened overall. And as fun as that would be to see some of the things that happened 500 years ago and know what's coming in advance. I'm so curious about the future and where we're at and the, some of the medical um things that we've had come about and the engineering and just the, the technology just in the last 10 or 20 years to imagine 500 years in advance, I would think, and I would hope that would be spectacular. But on the other hand, it could be taking us back to where we're just living off the land again. You know, we may get to a point where we um, <laughs> are starting over in a sense because history repeats itself and that does happen. So. Yes. Absolutely. What is your favorite quote? I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. I love that one. And I take that very literal. I, before I do um, shows or even many activities, I say a prayer, at least in my heart. And just know that if I have Christ with me, then I can literally do all things through him. Mm, yes, absolutely. What has been the longest trip you have been on? The longest trip? Oh, well. Um, gosh, that would probably be, yeah, I think um, probably about, probably about four or five years ago, uh, we took the family to the Florida Keys, and we were down there during Christmas, and we ended up staying there for about two and a half weeks. And I think that that might be the longest trip that I've been on. If you don't count living in the Philippines, because that was, that was actually living. That wasn't the trip per se. So, um, yeah, I would say probably just a trip down to the Florida Keys. Okay. That's cool. Yeah, it was really fun. Yes. What kind of music do you often listen to? <laughs> um, all kinds of music. Literally, I... I love to experience new music. I love finding new artists. Um, I love everything. Like sometimes in the, I'm in the mood for Vivaldi and some classical music. Sometimes I'm in the mood for some NF or something a little bit different. Quite often my choice is um, there's a Christian, Christian Today on my Apple Music. And I really enjoy that. It's uplifting. And I, I find a lot of new artists that way. So that's, that's where I spend most of my time listening, but I love to listen to everything. And I love to listen to 
you know, stuff from years and years and years ago. And so it's just fun. I love music. Yes, me too. How much time do you spend on the internet? A lot of time because of um, just marketing my music through social media. And then a lot of like with my fan club, I'm constantly writing out emails and sharing stuff on there. Um, and I love listening to, I guess, the internet. I, I'm really into Audible. I listen to books all the time. And then I read my scriptures online and stuff. So if you count all of that online, I spend quite a bit of time online. All right, then. <laughs> Would you rather speak all languages or talk to animals? Oh, my goodness. Um, I would have to say talk to animals. <laughs> I, <laughs> um, I do speak quite a bit of Spanish, and I speak a little bit of Cebuano, and, and it is fun, but speaking all languages, you're not going to, you know, you're, you're not going to get an opportunity for sure to use all of them. And just, it would be really fun to know what the animals think and be able to communicate with them. Yes, that does sound great. <laughs> Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> Have you ever met anyone famous? Um, yeah, I, yeah, I've met some famous people. I have. All right, then. Who are you? <laughs> yeah. What is the best pair of shoes you have owned? The best what? Pair of shoes. Oh, uh, that I've ever owned? Oh, wow. You're talking, okay, shoes are a big deal for me. I love, I love shoes. So to get into the best pair of shoes, um, you know, I've got some heels that were my favorites until I wore them flat out. I had bought them actually at this, at, at this mall in Denver on a trip and they were in a clearance section and it was my size and it just felt like they were meant to be because they were had all the color that I loved and they fit just perfect. I absolutely love those shoes. So it would be that pair or else I've actually got a pair of running shoes that I just wore out that were unbelievable. They literally felt like I was running on air and I felt like I, I felt like I was so much faster than them. I, I loved, I loved that pair of shoes. So that was really hard. And I literally just wore them out probably about six months ago. So that was, that was really sad. Uh, yeah. Do you ever travel often? Um, kind of go through stages, but yeah, I, I would have to say yes. Um, I, and, and it's interesting. I think it, anybody would agree to this, that once you start traveling, it's really addicting. And so um, I would probably say that I would, that I'd like to travel more than I do. But you know, having, you know, a child at home and having her be on a regular schedule doesn't always allow that. But yeah, I, I do travel as probably as much as I possibly can. <laughs> All right, then. Yeah. If you had a year of free time to learn or hone any skill, what would you do? One year to learn any skill. Oh, wow. That is a really good question. I, years ago, um, you know, it would be between, I've got two answers for this. I hope you don't mind. I, sure, go ahead. Some, <laughs> there's some instruments that I would like to learn. I, I play several instruments, but I, I, there's a couple that I've been wanting to learn, but, um, and then also years ago I started, I was, I did Taekwondo for a little bit of time and I got up to, I only got up to my blue belt. So I wasn't super far, but I just really enjoyed that. And, and I think it's really important to learn how to defend yourself. And so if I had a year to learn a new skill, I, it would probably be um, just to just to get maybe my black belt. And that's not going to change the world. That's not anything that's really important or anything. But that would just be something that I would like to do that I, I probably will never actually spend the time on. But it would be something that I would I would really enjoy. All right, then. If you could erase one past experience. What would it be? 
Oh. <laughs> Oh, this is one that I don't know that I can share. <laughs> um, yeah, well, several years ago, I trusted the wrong person and they turned out to be not a very good person. And so I think that, and inside I had a feeling just the very first time um, that, that I was helping out, helping teach piano to this specific person that I just had a feeling inside that it just felt like kind of like stay away, be, you know, keep your distance. And I didn't listen. And so if I could go back, I would, because it caused a lot of hurt and it ended up causing a lot of hurt and a lot of unnecessary <laughs> of hardship. So I would go back and listen to that little voice that told me, you know, not to do that. And anyway, just to leave. So <laughs> yeah. I wish I'd... I always listened to that little voice, but that one was a very big deal for me. So <laughs> yeah, indeed. <laughs> yeah. Who would you want to switch lives with? Oh my goodness gracious! Um, uh, wow. Who would I want to switch lives with? Um, I don't know. I really don't know the answer to that one. You've got me stumped. <laughs> you stumped me. <laughs> Done. I, yeah, I'm not sure. I really don't know. I know, you know, everybody, you know, even people that look like they have everything perfect and, a, and the best life ever, you know, they're still going through things. We all are and have our own trials. And as hard as my trials are, and sometimes they feel overwhelming, sometimes I, if I think about it, I'm like, oh, I'd rather have... I'd rather stick with mine, <laughs> you know? So I don't know. I don't know who I'd want to switch lives with. I just don't know on that one. That's all right. <laughs> Have you ever imagined a world that is a big, massive garden? A world that is a big, massive garden? Yeah, if you imagine living in a world where everything's yeah. just a garden. Oh, um, I guess I have a little bit. That's, that's a really funny and interesting question. I actually really like it um, because I guess, you know, I, I, you know I, I mentioned a few times different Christian things and, you know, believing in the Bible with the Garden of Eden, you know, they started in a world where it was kind of like a garden where everything was very fruitful and there was a beautiful growth. And I guess I kind of imagine it a little bit like, like that question. And so I, I thought about it in that sense and just thought, how nice that that would be. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> do you have any pets? I do. We have we have four pets right now. Um, but I grew up with so I grew up on a dairy farm, and I had a horse named Fleetwood, Fleetwood Mac. Uh, but we had several horses and cows and dogs and cats and chickens and pigs and oh my goodness, turkeys even like you just name it sheep at one time so I've always grown like I grew up with quite a bit of animals um but right now we have two dogs and two cats and but when but our cat one of our cats is missing right now she's been missing for about a week and a half so we're you know how cats are like sometimes they'll leave and you won't see them for a while so we're, we just keep hoping she's gonna come home and um anyway so the fingers are still crossed on that and prayers are going out so we have two cats uh Violet and Lily and then we have two dogs we have a little white Morky um, named Daisy. And then we have a huge borble. And a lot of people don't know what a borble is, but it's like, a, it's a dog. I think it's actually based out of Africa, but they're these huge dogs. They're, their heads almost look like bears and their paws look like they could be um, lion feet. But they're like the most mellow, sweetest dogs in the whole world. Unless like you were to hurt any of us, then they would be very dangerous. But um, that dog is Rocky, so. We have the four. Nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Would you rather never use social media again or never watch another movie or TV show again? Um, for me, that would be never watch another movie or TV. I really enjoy social media. And like I said, where I, my business is actually on there and I make money that way as well as through my music. And so... And I just really love connecting and getting to know people. I love making new friends. And I know that it's, it's different because online, 
sometimes you just see people's best side and you don't maybe always know who they are, but in a lot of ways you can get to know people. Um, and I really enjoy that. I really enjoy that part of social media. And plus it keeps me updated on what's going on in the world. Well, I mean, <laughs> I think it is, you know, I don't, I don't know sometimes how much of, of the truth is being shown, but I mean, that would be the same with the news on TV, right? So if I was just to watch TV or a movie anyway, so I do really enjoy movies. So that's, that makes it a little bit hard for me, but but yeah, I, I don't watch hardly any TV at all. So that part would have been easy. But I, I do love a good movie. Yes, absolutely. What always makes you laugh? <laughs> what always makes me laugh? Um, I love to laugh. So a lot of things make me laugh. Um, our pets make me laugh a lot. My daughter makes me laugh a lot. Um, I love funny movies and funny shows. Um, I'm trying to think if there's something really, because I'm thinking of a specific, like, something specific that would make me laugh. Um, uh, I don't, I don't know. I, I guess I laugh at a lot of things. So I guess silly jokes. I've got kind of a silly sense of humor sometimes. I think people call them like dad jokes or something where they're, they're almost dumb, but they're, they're funny. They're really funny to me. Like I, I find myself like laughing out loud. <laughs> with those jokes so I guess we yes. said dad jokes <laughs> all right then if you can get an exotic pet what would it be get a what kind of pet an exotic pet oh an exotic pet I would probably I would get I would get um I'd get a tiger I think that um I just think they're so beautiful, so exotic. I love the coloring. I think I think it would be really awesome to have a tiger. <laughs> hmm. All right then. <laughs> You're not gonna see me walking around with them, don't worry. I mean we're just saying at you know, if. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. That's cool. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> what is the best way to travel? Um the best way to travel, I would say, I I love to fly, um, and in fact, I, I I'm halfway to my pilot's license. I love flying. I love being in the air. Um, but if it's just commercial on, you know, a, a plane, like so, if it was a plane, like with just me and a couple of people, I would love. I would say by plane. Um, but if it's you know just a a jet with a whole bunch of people, I would say by boat. I love the ocean and love sailing. And I haven't, I mean, I haven't traveled as much by boat. And I think it would be, I've always thought it'd be really neat to, you know, just do, take a year off or, I mean, not that that's ever going to happen, but three months or a year off and just, you know, jump, jump in a boat and just see the world, see as much as you could. Yes, absolutely. If your life was a meal, what would it be? If Say that one more time. If your life was a meal, what kind of meal would it be? Oh, my, my life? Yeah, as a meal. Um, uh, okay, what would my life be a meal? What would it be? It would be... Um... <laughs> oh, okay, it would be... I'm going to say this is probably will sound a little bit silly, um, but <laughs> right now, I, lately, I've been hooked on this Subway sandwich called The Outlaw, and um, it's it's got all, I love a lot of vegetables. It's got all of the vegetables, because I'm, I'm, I'm a littler person. I'm, I'm not super tall, and I'm, I'm quite thin, and so, you know, light, like more vegetables, um, but then it's really spicy because I put a ton of jalapenos in it and I like the chipotle sauce and I love to put as much of that in as I could. And then it's got just enough meat because, you know, you can't be too skinny and you got to and it's got enough variety. So my life would have tons of variety and tons of flavor. <laughs> hmm. So I would say that right now. And I think I'm hungry now that you're saying that. So I'm like, ooh, that sounds really good. <laughs> yes, it sure does. <laughs> What would you do if you found out you've won the lottery? I would 
I would write out everything I wanted to do <laughs> and then look at it sensibly because I would, I, I would invest a lot of it and put a lot of it in the bank to be wise. Um, but I would love to help a lot of people. I, I, I think the first thing I do is I get a car that I just love, which this sounds a little bit selfish and forgive me, but um, I really love like H1 Hummers and I really love like Porsche Cabriolets. So I'd probably get that or like a Lamborghini or something. And then the rest of the money, um, I'd buy my parents a house. Um, and then the rest of the money I would literally just use to help people to make their day. Like I would go to the grocery store and like the people in front of me or behind me, I would pay for their groceries. I, in at the fast food thing, I would take care of the car behind me. You know what I mean? Like stuff like that. So that they, they can't even necessarily know who you are, but maybe they'll have seen you or whatever, but you're just like helping people, you know, throughout the day and just like making them smile and making their day and helping them out, you know, cause you, and I would pray about it each day too, so that God would like lead me to those people that really needed the help. And that way I could actually be like an instrument and it just had to, to do good and just help people. And I think that that would be amazing. Wow. Fantastic. <laughs> do you like spicy food oh my goodness yes bring it on i love like super hot habanero sauce like I, there was this ghost pepper um sauce that somebody gave me for my birthday once and it was literally so hot that i would get like headaches when i ate it but i <laughs> so i thought i better probably stop at some point but yeah i love i love spicy food like when um I, when I have Indian friends and they bring over the food, I'm, I love it. I just love spicy. So absolutely. Nice. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> How did you spend your last birthday? Oh, my last birthday. Let me think. What did I do? Oh, that's pretty, that's pretty bad if I don't even remember. <laughs> um, I think that it was just like, um, we had a family party at home and I don't even think that I did. Like uh, my husband, he takes me out for my birthday somewhere really nice. Actually, I remember now, I, we went to a really, really nice restaurant, one of my favorites and ordered steak and lobster and just kind of, you know, went all out that way as far as um, splurging with a really nice restaurant. And then, um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't even go anywhere or anything. That should be changed. <laughs> but yeah, I just had a family party at home. So, which is actually the greatest. Yeah, so. I suppose. <laughs> what, are, what has been the best thing you've bought off Amazon? Oh, I like Amazon a lot. So the best thing that I've bought off of Amazon has been, ooh, what has it been? Let me think. Cause I, you know, Amazon has some pretty good things. I like, I jump on in there a lot. Um, best thing I bought off of there would be, huh, I'm not even sure because I'm trying to think, I've never bought an instrument off of Amazon, um, but I buy a lot of gifts, like usually I buy gifts for people because shipping is so expensive anyway, that rather than pay shipping at like the post office or FedEx, like it just makes more sense to me just to spend a little bit more money and do it through Amazon. So, um, but I don't know what I've gotten that's been really fabulous on there. I'm not, I don't know. I'm not sure what the best gift that I've gotten on there. Or not gift, but the best thing that I bought off of Amazon is. You know, I buy a lot of stuff even for my, like, um, I've got a keyboard that I really liked, actually, on Amazon. And it turned out even better than I thought it was going to be. So, yeah, we'll say the keyboard. <laughs> nice, very good. Yeah. Which recent news story have you found most interesting? Um, there was a story I was listening to last night, and it was about the Super Bowl, and it was about Taylor Swift, <laughs> and just about, like, some of the strange thinking, things that were happening at the Super Bowl, and, I mean, because we're just talking recently, so that was, like, the most recent one on the news, but I have to be careful, because I have kind of a strong opinion about the way things are, the way it should be, but um, that one was interesting to me, because it had a couple of different perspectives, and the, um, 
uh, the people that were presenting the news, you know, one of them was really into the actual football game. And then the other one was actually into more of the um, Biden tweets and the, you know, Taylor Swift. And I, I don't know. So anyway, that was really yeah. interesting. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> there's, there's many ways to go about this. And yeah, there's, uh, there's always someone going to say something about anything, really. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Yeah. And that is all we have for this episode. It's great having you on Lady Redneck, talking about your works on music, how you've been up to since we've last met, and a lot of other things. It's been great. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. I, actually, those questions were so fun. I really, I really enjoyed that. So thank you so much again. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. And until next time, stay tuned for more. <laughs>